was awesome. Awesome? Well, the result was awesome. The result was awesome. But why didn't they start Sammy? He usually does great in home games. That was in Ottawa. <laughs> oh. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the not nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Puppies, Iggy, stop drooling all over my carpet. You, you notice I did something different? Lube shed is back on the wall. Shish! Leafs win! 5-4 in the shootout over the Ottawa Senators. Real quick, think you know which way it's gonna go? Head on over to Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Wanna bet? Head over to sportsinteraction.com slash stpn or download the app. You can use the QR code on the screen, but only if you're 19 plus and please play responsibly. Okay, so... Here's how we do LFR videos we don't really want to do. Dude, it's, um, rare. It's rare for me to dread a video where they win. It's rare for me to dread a video. I like doing this. But today sucked. Today sucked for a variety of reasons. Obvious reasons. I'm sure you heard all the Rhymer stuff by now. And listen, I'm not letting them hijack the video. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do reaction to the Sens game because that's... That's what happened. That's the game the Leafs played, and this is Leaf fan reaction. Then, at the end, we'll talk about that stuff. Because, again, I, I don't want them to hijack the show on Monday, either. Oh, yeah, I get your comments ready. I already know. So, look! Uh, I think my favorite thing about that game is the Leafs had no business winning it. Opening few minutes, the Leafs are getting outshot by the Sands. It's the opening few minutes. It doesn't matter. And just over three minutes in, Mitch Marner finds Jake McCabe, who snaps! it past Mad Sogard, the 22-year-old goaltender for the Ottawa Senators, who are in a goaltending pinch right now. And guess what? The Leafs have the lead barely over three minutes into the game. McCabe's third of the season and first as a Leaf. But then the period continues and continues and continues and continues. And Matt Murray is standing tall and a puck gets by him, but I think he can be forgiven. Because I love that I have watched literally thousands of hockey games in my life. Thousands! I've never seen this. Shane Pinto puts it on, it pinballs off everything. The puck then hits Julian Goche's heel, which is behind him. And he like does the Stewie thing from Mad TV, like this. But it doesn't even actually mean to, it just sort of happens. Puck goes like 15 feet in the air and I don't care what goalie coach you have, none of them say check up there. Maybe they do, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If you're a goaltender, crane your neck! No, it's, it's not, I don't think it's gonna take off. But anyway, it goes up and over Matt Murray and in. So the game is tied 1-1 and the period continues and continues and continues and by the end of it the Sens outshoot the Leafs 19 to 9 then the second period starts and the Sens continue to outshoot and continue to outshoot and continue to outshoot and then the Leafs get a power play and on that power play the Sens continue to outshoot and continue to outshoot and finally the Leafs luck runs out Tim Stutzla beats Matt Murray you can play with fire for so long before you get burned and the Sens are up 2-1 so like I said on the stream best case scenario is the Leafs break even on this power play which they do the Sens were all over the Leafs in this game like they outshot them and they got a wild amount of shots so you might be paying attention to the offense the Sens defense smothering the Leafs at times especially in the first half of this game was their strength they skated way faster than the Leafs they were more aggressive than the Leafs the Leafs couldn't breathe but because of the numbers game with the power play the Leafs have a shred of light Marner has open guys he can pass to but instead he decides I have a pretty good shot I'm gonna go one-on-one -on -one with the kid and he beats him tie game and you look and yeah the Leafs scored but they only broke even on the power play you look up at the shots and it's not good news like at all but in the back of your mind you're like it's tied that's something until a few minutes later Austin Matthews gets the puck and he takes it in by himself and by the way his line mates in this game were Kerfoot and Yarncroak I had some people like Steve what is Keith doing he's out of his mind not quite the Leafs went 12-6 in this game and there's a reason for that first of all I think it was already the plan but second of all the Leafs played yesterday against the Carolina Hurricanes they had 11 forwards and after the first period when Noel Achari got hurt they played the final 40 minutes with 10 no that they had a back-to-back -back with travel what fun so on defense they take out Gustafson and they take out Mark Giordano why not give the 39 year old a rest 
Justin Hall goes into the lineup. But up front, it's Bobby McMahon with an opportunity. He's been lighting the American Hockey League up, and Wayne Simmons goes in. So now we have 12. Problem is, you can't really load up the first line or even really the top six because Keefe, the night before, was first to way overplay his guys, like Marner especially. So Matthews was on one line, Marner was on the other, Nylander was on the third, and I think the reason for that is he wanted to just roll lines. This lineup that Keefe put together was less about trying to win a hockey game and more about not having anyone collapse from exhaustion. So when Matthews goes in there looking for some friends, he finds one, a really fast one named Callie Yarncrow, who has decided I'm gonna sign a four-year contract in my 30s and follow it up with the best season of my life. Matthews to Yarncrow for the one-timer, you can do that, Callie? Again, and it's three, two Leafs halfway through the game, despite the fact that they are getting way outplayed. And that is how we would go into the second intermission with the Senators out shooting the Leafs 37 to 20. And the third period starts. And the Sens are again running the Leafs out of their alleged building. That team needs an arena at LeBreton Flats so bad. It'll be a better, newer facility and their fans might actually outnumber opposing fans. But despite the fact that the Sens are just running the Leafs show, Matt Murray is holding them in this thing. Yarn Croak, who scored about at the nine and a half minute mark, of the second period, scores at about the nine and a half minute mark of the third. Because the Leafs, who were not trading chances with the Sens at all, it was like the Sens got three for every one the Leafs got, but the Leafs made their one count. Two on one, Matthews, sauce. To Yarn Croak, finish! Yarn Croak, Swedish finish! His 17th of the season, a new career high, and the Leafs somehow, some way, lead this game four to two. Until about a minute later, th this one's just really unfortunate the way it all happened. Sens are behind the Leafs net. They're looking to throw it out in front. All the while, Brady Kachuk, a huge man, is just steaming into the Leafs zone. Tavares is on him until he's not on him because he fell down. So if you look in front of the Leafs net and you're like, why are the Sens outnumbering them? That's why. Sens throw it in front, Brody gets a piece of it. I think it was destined for Drake Batherson and he misses it. But Brady Kachuk, the extra guy, buries it and don't go anywhere, this game ain't over. And it doesn't help that after the fourth goal that the Leafs scored, Mad Sogard decided to make like his three best saves of the game. Just under two minutes to go now, the Sens, despite outplaying the Leafs, outchancing them, outshooting them, they cannot tie this thing. Empty net, they've gotta tie this thing. Just under two minutes to go. Alex Dabrinkit, how did he get so far open? Scores! Brody was out there, he had a guy. Hull was out there, he had a guy. No one had the extra attacker. Sends tie it. Except they don't. Whoever on the Leaf staff said to challenge this thing, I wanna congratulate you on what might have been the fastest offside review in NHL history. Like, maybe literally? Like, the refs put those headphones on and took them off. Also, did you notice there was a guy, like, holding the, the Tamagotchi, like, the, the iPad for those refs? We gotta get them a bigger screen. We gotta get them a bigger screen, come on. But I wanna know, like, how do I get that job? Like, what, what are the qualifications? I, I'm gonna quit everything and get that job. And it turns out, Dabrinkit, the very guy who scored the goal, was offside. And you might say to yourself, oh, come on, he was only a little bit offside. Eh, he was more than a little bit offside. And regardless of whether he was a little or a lot, it factored heavily into the goal. Part of the reason he was so far open and the Leafs were so unprepared for him is he got a step on the play. So it continues and Marner is out there battling and David Camp is out there battling with every inch of his life. Oh, Jake McKay was doing a great job out there too and ironically, it ends up going off him. Dying seconds of the game. The Sens throw it on, blocked by Jake McCabe and it's in the back of the net. It is the worst feeling this happens to me all the time in Chow! Where you crouch, he's literally like L1, he's into a crouch block. He's doing the crouch block and it goes off his leg and it couldn't have gone more perfectly onto the stick of Brady Kachuk. It's almost like Claude Giroux did it on purpose. He's Claude Giroux, I wouldn't put it past him. He might have. So the game 
goes to overtime. And I'm sad to say that in overtime, the Sens ran the Leafs show as well. This game had four periods. The Sens outshot the Leafs in all of them. 19 to nine, that was quite bad. 18 to 11, not much better. 12 to seven in a period where the Leafs were winning almost the entire time. That, that That's their best one. Somehow that makes sense. And then in overtime, the Sens only outshot the Leafs three to two. I would love to know the actual puck possession numbers because the Sens had that thing a lot and they trapped guys out there for a minute, minute and a half, two minutes. Tavares had an exhausting shift. David Kampf had an exhausting shift. Matthews had an exhausting shift. Lilligren had an exhausting shift. Basically all their starters, the, the guys you would expect to be the biggest stars in this moment, maybe outside of Marner or Nylander, were wiped. This thing miraculously gets to the shootout, where the Leafs honestly probably have a better chance of winning. Now I would like to give you a visual representation from NHL.com of how long this shootout was! You could have fit three Freebird guitar solos into this shootout. 18 shooters?! And you want to talk about some clutch performances. So Dabrinkit scores on the first one, uh-oh. Nylander scores on the Leafs' first one, great. No to Timmy Stutes, yes to Austin Matthews. So Drake Batherson has to score or it's over, he does. Sogard has to stop Marner or it's over, he does. Then both Sogard and Murray combine to stop the next six shooters. The Leafs had so many opportunities to close the game out, but Sogard kept stoning them. Derek Broussard finally scores for the Sens. They have a chance to win. Only for Michael Bunting. Has he ever taken a shootout shot for the Leafs? Ties the thing. Nothing for Shabbat. Nothing for Bobby McMahon. And you know what? I, I actually, even though he didn't score, I think that was a smart pick for Keith. First of all, McMahon's been an amazing goal scorer in the AHL, but also Sogard spent most of his season down in the AHL. Toronto and Belleville play each other like twice a week. Bobby McMahon probably knows this goalie. Shooter 17, Chikrin is stopped. And hilariously, and I said this on the stream, Kerfoot, who hasn't scored in like what, 40 shots? Ends the thing, five hole. The Leafs win in the shootout two points when they probably deserve zero. And the only reason they got two, even one, is because of Matt Murray. Unfortunately, his streak extends to, I believe, six consecutive games allowing four goals or more, but not all games where you allow four goals are equal. Murray stopped 48 of 52 shots. That is the most solid he has looked, maybe in a Leaf uniform, at least in a month or two. He was spectacular best player on the ice. So do you get concerned about the fact that the Sens outshot the Leafs so heavily? Maybe. I don't, personally. Listen, the Leafs are at home and they're on a couple days rest. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. I worry about that. But you play Carolina the night before. You have to travel the next day for another game against Ottawa, who always plays you like it's game seven of the Stanley Cup final. And you played 40 minutes of 10 forward hockey against the Carolina Hurricanes the day before. Three of the dudes in the lineup did not play, four, including Murray, did not play the day before. Sheldon Keefe did not assemble a Thrive lineup for this game. Not at all, not even close. He tried his best to assemble a Survive lineup. They survived. It wasn't a Mona Lisa. I don't even think that was a macaroni picture on the fridge but it's two points in the standings, and I'll take that. Hooray, the Leafs won. Now let's uh, talk about the James Reimer thing. Man, I feel bad for whoever organized Pride Night and all of that for the San Jose Sharks, because leading up to this statement from James Reimer, like, people were praising them, the, the San Jose Sharks, that is, for doing maybe the best one. Maybe the best Pride Night uh, around the NHL. The Ducks did a pretty good one too. And the Sharks announced they were going to wear the Pride jerseys and James Reimer wasn't going to do it. So here's his statement on not wearing the Pride jersey with the rest of his teammates, by the way. Under the umbrella of the NHL's Hockey is for Everyone initiative, the San Jose Sharks have chosen to wear jerseys in support of the LGBTQIA plus community tonight. For all 13 years of my NHL career, I have been a Christian. Not just in title, but in how I choose to live my life daily. I have a personal faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sins and, in response, asked me to love everyone and follow him. I have no hate in my heart for anyone, and I have always strived to treat everyone that I encounter with respect and kindness. 
In this specific instance, I am choosing not to endorse something that is counter to my personal convictions, which are based in the Bible, the highest authority in my life. I strongly believe that every person has value and worth, and the LGBTQIA community, like all others, should be welcomed in all aspects of the game of hockey. James Reimer. So it's it's not like I did a big diatribe on Ivan Provorov in an LFR video, but like I haven't been a really loud and outspoken Ivan Provorov fan for the last 12 years. James Reimer has been my dude for a really long time. From the moment he arrived with the Leafs, oh, I could go on and on. I mean, when he arrived and he made a lot of saves and he was this happy guy and this friendly guy and I was sad when he was gone and I wished him the, the best when he went to another team and I wouldn't have minded the Leafs getting him back and now I'm really sad. I'm really sad and I'm really disappointed. And it's strange because nuance is very interesting because I think hate comes in a variety of forms. Hate doesn't always yell or scream or punch or kick or threaten. I find the order of the statement really interesting because if you reverse the order of the last two paragraphs, it makes it seem much more contradictory. I strongly believe that every person has value and worth and the LGBTQIA plus community, like all others, should be welcomed in all aspects of the game of hockey. Second last paragraph, in this specific instance, I am choosing to not endorse something that is counter to my personal convictions, which are based on the Bible, the highest authority in my life. Which convictions? Which ones? Be specific. You, you know, you, you're really, you're standing up for something. Which convictions? Which ones? I'm just curious. Are these people doing something bad or wrong or evil even? You, you would welcome in people that you think do evil things and are evil? I'd wear the jersey, am I evil? Are, are your teammates who are wearing the jersey and therefore endorsing this behavior, are they evil for endorsing what exactly? Endorsing what? And this is why I say hate comes in all forms. I, I don't think James Reimer would hurt a fly. I, I mean, uh, look at him. He's he's practically Santa Claus with a goatee. Or not, a, what, what is, what's the called when you just have this? Whatever. And like, he's not the only Christian in the NHL. There's lots of Christians. There's lots of different kinds of Christians, but they're Christian. Like for example, saw this on Twitter. If you look close enough, Philip Grubauer has a cross on his helmet, but he's still wearing a pride jersey. It's not that hard, y'all. Grubauer is obviously a Christian and still decided to wear it, which is his choice by the way and that's his freedom and i think a lot of people were arguing with a scary monster that didn't exist today when i was talking about this on twitter reimer can do whatever he wants i wasn't saying he he has to wear it he's mandated to wear it no one said that no one said that and if they did say that they're wrong he, he doesn't have to do anything he does not want to do it's a free society. I'm not saying he has to do anything he doesn't want to do, and he didn't. I don't know if you were keeping track of that. He did what he said he was going to do. That's, that's a free guy, isn't it? But you're still allowed to criticize that free decision that he made, which is my freedom by the way, and everyone else's freedom. In the same way that you're free to type whatever nasty thing you're in the middle of typing. Would you repeat that in church? This is difficult to wrestle with. Um, like, Reimer, I'm sure, I think we all know at least one person, know and love at least one person in our personal lives like James Reimer, who would give you the shirt off their back and would, like, like I honestly think he would drop everything he was doing uh, to help you, but they have this belief and they will not be talked out of this particular belief where this is wrong and not uh -uh. does that automatically make that person a bad person oh i don't know the answer to that i really don't that's mm. and some people are going to be disappointed in me saying that uh that's hard that's really hard i think you can love someone or admire someone and think that a particular belief that they have is wrong. I think this particular belief that Reimer has is wrong. 
It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, hey, you're welcome to come into the building. That's cool. But who you are is so against what I believe in and a book that I believe in that I, I'm not even gonna put in a jersey representing you. That is slightly putting words in his mouth and I mean slightly, cause it's really not. I mean, how else should anyone interpret that? I don't know, maybe we're not ready. Maybe we're not ready for these nights because there's still a little bit, there's a little pocket of players who just they won't put on a jersey to say you're loved and you belong. Cause why? It's against my belief. Why? Why is it against your beliefs? They must be doing something wrong. What is it? What is it about who someone is that's so wrong? And listen, this is a journey for everyone. Uh, not everyone gets there right away. Uh, listen, in my life, I didn't get there right away. A lot of people didn't get there right away. James isn't there. Maybe he gets there. I, I really hope he does. Because, again, I think he'd give you the shirt off his back. But he wouldn't put one on. And the community was one player. One player away from being as welcomed as they've been in any building in the National Hockey League. One player away. And instead, Reimer became a reminder I'm so disappointed, man. He became a reminder that not everyone is there. It's not black and white. The, the the community is welcomed into many Christian spaces. And I guess a lot of people have a lot of different interpretations of the same book. I think if you think who someone is is so wrong, you won't even put on a jersey, you're wrong. That's my personal belief. That's my personal belief that if your interpretation of a book is this person and the way they were born is evil that's wrong and a lot of people were crying oh so now everyone hates james reimer i think people are a little bit more complicated than that i think about it like you have a big beautiful white rug and you spill some red wine on it right right on the corner and you have this mostly big white rug and there's a wine stain and you can t turn the corner a, a little bit folded underneath you you can cover it with a piece of furniture but even though you might not see it even though what you see after you the wine stain after the spill is this big beautiful white carpet with maybe a few things on it you'll always know the stain is there you can still admire the carpet for what it is it's a beautiful carpet but you know where the stain is you've seen it you move the furniture a little bit you uncover it it's still there so no i don't think you have to hate this guy i don't think you have to think he's a bad guy but this particular belief in my particular belief sucks it sucks a lot and i feel really sad and i feel really disappointed and i can't even imagine how much more disappointed members of the community are and all i can say is you're welcome here and you're loved. I don't know if I did good with that. I don't even know if all the words made sense. I'm, I'm sad, man. I'm sad. That came out at like what four o'clock. I was just walking into walls, like just, you know, maybe maybe it shouldn't be like that, you know. I mean, it's sports. It's not like I'm looking up to this hero of mine. I'm actually two days older than him. But I really admired the guy and it really it bummed me out a lot. So here, let's highlight a good one because San Jose Sharks captain, Logan Couture, who was one of the almost every San Jose Sharks who decided to wear the warm-up jerseys, had this statement. Credit to Corey Massasek from The Athletic. Sharks captain Logan Couture spoke about James Reimer's decision not to wear a pride jersey tonight. Here are a few of Couture's responses to questions about the decision. Thoughts on Reimer declining to participate. Every individual has a choice, and he has made his. The rest of us are going to be wearing the jersey. I think this organization sees this as an extremely important night, and I think a lot of guys in the room are very excited to go out and wear the jersey and celebrate it. I think that hockey really is for everyone. It is an inclusive sport. We want it to be that way. We're looking forward to going out there and putting the jersey on and playing a game. Why is it important to wear the jersey to you and your teammates? I can just speak for myself. 
Every individual is different. Every individual has different beliefs. There's a lot of guys on a hockey team, and that's the way that and that's the way that the world is, I guess. For me, I've always enjoyed these types of games, these types of nights. We usually have one every year here in San Jose, at least to my knowledge. I do think that hockey is at its best when it includes everyone. Everyone gets to enjoy this incredible game that we play. It really is a lot of fun to play. So I think every person should have the opportunity to play. How did you find out? It was discussed. He brought it up to the guys and that was basically it. We talked about it just really quickly. I think he put out a statement probably along the same lines probably along the same lines of what he said to us. So there it is. There's what Logan Couture said. I've said my piece. Um, don't in the comments. If you see someone say something nasty, let them leave it. Just leave it. Uh, I've been called worse. And uh, I've been called worse by better. Um, it's very, I find it very interesting that every time people on social media seem to defend uh, religion and this pure way of being, they go about it in a very impure way. I don't remember the part where they said, and on the eighth day, God created multiple accounts on social media to call you names from. Again, would you say those things in church? You're, you're going, right? I believe James Reimer when he says it's for religious reasons. I still disagree with those religious reasons, but I at very least believe him when he says it's for religious reasons. For most people, I don't think it's for religious reasons. I think you're just an asshole. And I don't know if that makes it worse, but it doesn't make it better. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video, I hope. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends you belong through your words and your actions.